Hey, what's going on everyone? Thank you for watching my video. This is Mike from the Pipe Doctor Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning. Our number is 516-348-6300. You can also email me directly at mike at pipedoc.net. I wanted to take a little bit of time out today uh, to discuss frozen pipes. Um, and particularly, why do they freeze up? Um, you know, what you can do to prevent, you know, it from freezing up uh, in the future, if you've experienced that, uh, what the pipes are made of in your home, and um, what you can do to try to avoid this overall. <clears throat> you know, um, in the past couple weeks here in the uh, New York metropolitan Long Island area, we've had some pretty cold, frigid days. You know, last week we had an outdoor ambient temperature of around four and five degrees with wind. And let me tell you, it got cold. And what, you know, would normally be a good heating system for a house, you know, really struggled to you really get there. You know, if you were normally used to 70 degree weather, you were lucky if you were in the 60s. And if you lived, well, if you live out west in the Midwest, you know, Chicago, Wisconsin, Michigan area, oh, man, I... God, I um, hope, uh, you know, you're able to survive that. <clears throat> but, like I said, I want to take a few minutes and uh, talk about frozen pipes, burst pipes, and what you could do about that. Frozen pipes. One of the things that we see a lot of as a uh, plumbing, heating, HVAC, uh, service and repair contractor is what you see right in front of your screen right now. This is a uh, copper uh, tube, aluminum fin, hydronic heating up section of baseboard. Uh, these fins right here, you know, act as the heat transfer medium. This is the uh, copper pipe that's here. And this bulge right here is uh, a frozen burst pipe. Now, a lot of people think that your pipes will freeze uh, because of, uh, you know, that's where the ice was and uh, that's where it bursts. However, that's usually not the case. You know, they usually freeze because of ice that's expanding in the place and uh, the water that's between like the uh, a faucet or a fixture is under so much immense pressure that it actually, the pressure of that water causes, you know, fittings or piping to split open. So when the water freezes, you know, the molecules crystallize and, uh, you know, and, and form, which takes, the uh, which takes a lot more space than, um, you know, the water molecules um, when they're liquid. And uh, those water molecules then expand as they freeze. And uh, as the ice expands, it pushes water you know, toward the closed faucet or fixture. And this causes an immense amount of water pressure to build up between that ice blockage and the faucet. Eventually, the pipe will rupture under that pressure, and it's usually in a spot where there's, you know, a little or no ice. So let me quickly talk about, you know, six great tips to keep the pipes from freezing. You know, cold temperatures can cause water pipes to freeze. You know, the freezing in a pipe causes a lot of pressure inside the pipe and can cause the pipe to burst and likely lead to some serious flooding. Um, and that's especially true when there's no one around to turn off the water. So the best prevention against frozen pipes is to keep them warm enough to stay above the freezing point. And you can do this with any one of six simple steps or better still, a combination of these measures. So number one, and this is the, the, the most important, and that's just to keep the heat on. <clears throat> you know, if you have a, uh, a programmable, you know, digital setback thermostat that typically, you know, is lower than um, the normal set point temperature when you're home. So say, for example, your home, you normally keep the thermostat set between, let's say, 68, 72, wherever you like to keep it at. You know, it should really, you know, most people keep it in that range. 
Uh, if you're not home, some people, you know, they program their thermostats to save some money and drop it down to, you know, to 60, 65. Uh, that's not a good thing to do when it's very cold out, you know, below freezing, uh, and especially if it's below freezing and it's very windy. So um, one of the most important things you can do is to keep the heat on, you know. Uh, if you have tenants, you know, that are living in a, in a rental property, uh, you got to tell them, you got to convince them to keep the heat on in the property. And um, it may be difficult to convince your tenants, you know, to leave the heat on when they're away at work, whatever, especially when they're responsible for paying their own bills. Um, but you should inform them that, listen, you know, if the, if the heat drops down in temperature because of a set point, uh, programmable setback thermostat and uh, a pipe freezes, you know, well, you know what? It could lead to a substantial uh, water damage to the property, you know, your property, but also could severely damage, you know, a lot of or all of their possessions. You know, this morning I went on a service call um, not too far from our office and uh, it was a landlord tenant thing. You know, the landlord was trying to reach us, you know, overnight, you know, between two and three o'clock in the morning. Our answering service, you know, told him, listen, we're not taking any more calls tonight because we already booked solid. Uh, so he called back at around seven o'clock in the morning. I got him on the phone. I went out to the to his house. And, uh, of course, the tenants are nowhere to be found. <laughs> you know, I'm banging on the door for a good 20 minutes. No answer. The tenants, you know, the landlord says he's going to be there in a few minutes, you know, and let us, lets us in. And what I see is just, you know, heartbreaking. You know, I'm also a, um, you know, rental property owner and uh, also a homeowner as well. And let me see. Let me tell you, I walked in that front door and water was literally pouring down the first floor ceiling, and like everywhere in the first floor ceiling, I was kind of shocked. Normally one or two pipes break. But um, I saw water pouring down from the entire first floor ceiling onto the floor of the first floor, hardwood floors, of course, you know. Went down to the basement. There's a few inches of water in the basement as well. Finished basement, of course. Of course, right? And um, it's kind of crazy, but the... Boiler feed valve, they have a steam gas-fired boiler. The boiler feed valve, right up against an outside wall, I don't know, must have froze up, but opened up and flooded out the steam system. The piping, the steam piping in the house and the steam radiators, which normally just, you know, allow steam to travel, completely filled. And um, from the third floor down. So let me tell you, it's, you know... It's heartbreaking, but you want you need to convince your tenants that you need to keep the heat up. And, um, you know, some, you know, plumbers and some websites will tell you that, you know, the heat doesn't have to be as high as you normally would keep it, you know. Um, and they, some, some idiots even say, you know, setting it at least, a, you know, 50 degrees or above is a great idea. But let me tell you something. You want to keep the heat at 70 or above. Especially when it's four or five degrees outside, you got 30 mile an hour winds, you got this cold air blasting against the side of the house. And let me tell you something, it's going to penetrate into that house and it's going to cause a pipe, you know, the water to freeze up. So, rule number one, tip number one, keep the heat on, guys. Number two, allow the faucets to drip. I'm not saying keep it fully on, but allow the faucets to drip. So if you're afraid a pipe's going to freeze, open up the, you know, the faucet, the hot and cold side, just a little bit so it's a steady drip, 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 right? And the principle behind that is, is that water that's moving is less likely to freeze up, you know? So um, you also, you know, tip number three you want to try to keep, you know, the interior doors open, you know, whether it's the doors under the cabinet here in this example, you know, keep these doors open, you know, bedroom doors, bathroom doors. You want the heat in the house to be able to normally convect and move around. All right. So do that. Tip number three, keep the interior doors open, cabinet doors, closet doors, the interior doors. Number four, uh, you want to seal up cracks and holes. You know, seal them up, especially, you know, if you, if you put your hand near a hole in a wall and you feel cold air, 
Man, you want to get some spray foam in there, you know, that great stuff that they sell at those big box stores. You know, I know that stuff is messy, but it expands. So, you know, you can shove that little nozzle inside a little crack or hole, you know, and, uh, you know, shoot some insulation in there. Better yet, you know, have an, uh, a professional insulation company contractor come out and assess ways that they can make the house more energy efficient. Um, some plumbers like to uh, recommend, you know, applying heating tape. You know, on the uh, on the piping, and uh, heat tape works like an electric blanket for pipes. You know, it's supplying heat directly to the pipe, you know, to keep it uh, warm during you know very cold uh, spells. Uh, this could be a great solution for some short short sections of pipe that are at higher risk for freezing. You know, maybe like in a crawl space, um, things like that. Um, and it's usually, you know, a pipe piping that you want to have, you know, easily accessible. So you could just wrap the tape around it and, uh, you know, plug it in. And that way you can monitor it. Uh, there are two types of heating pipe. Uh, one that turns on and off by itself when it senses the heat is needed. Usually they have temperature sensors. And another type just manual, you know, just plugs in, you know, like a light switch. You plug it in, you know, it, it heat, the, the wire, heat wire, heat trace wire heats up and uh, heats, keeps the, the pipe warm. If you're going to put uh, heat tape on, you know, piping, it's also a good idea to throw some insulation around that as well, which leads us into tip number six, add extra insulation. Pipes that are located in areas that don't have proper insulation, such as basements or attics, may need extra insulation to keep them from freezing. You know, pipes in basements or in attics or in unconditioned spaces um, aren't the only ones uh, that could be... Uh, you know, properly insulated in the cold. You know, if you have pipes that, you know, have been frozen in the past, you know, inside of a wall, you know, guess what? Before you close up that wall, insulate it. You know, you can uh, fit them with the, you know, that foam insulation, fiberglass sleeves, you know, anything just to help decrease the chances of freezing. So let me tell you, and here's, here's an exa uh, example of, you know, what's practical pipe insulation. Let's say you have an outside hose faucet. Here's an example. Um, this is actually a frost-free hose faucet, um, and the way it's installed <laughs> uh, is, is likely the reason why it froze up, but, um, you know, let's say, for example, you have the hose faucet out here, you know, the other day, one of my guys went on a service call, and this pipe, you know, from the, uh, from the wall to the actual hose spigot itself was about three feet long. <laughs> Seriously, it was three feet long because there were bushes here. And whoever, you know, decided, hey, listen, you know, I don't want to put my stick my hand through the bushes to hook up a hose and turn this on. So I'm just going to extend this pipe three feet past the bushes. That way I could just, you know, hook it up without, you know, it's more convenient. Um, but guess what? This section of pipe froze up for that one particular client. Why? Even if you insulated it, you're turning off the water here. Not in this particular uh, faucet, but you're turning off the water here. So you still have water from the point of, you know, the, where the pipe is connected to the, uh, the indoor home plumbing to the actual faucet itself under pressure, right? So let's say you were to wrap this section, in that particular case, this three-foot piece of pipe, uh, with insulation. Um, it's not going to make a difference. You know, you could put a jacket on, you know, and, you, it's, you know, given enough time, you're going to freeze, right? So you have to be practical with, insula you know, the plumbing that's in the house, the outside of the house, and what you can insulate uh, properly to prevent this from happening. In this particular example, this is a frost-free hose faucet, all right? When you turn this knob here, the actual valve stops back here. Right, and this is this will contain no water. And if you look close enough where the split is, you can actually see the valve mechanism inside there. Now, let me see if I can get a better picture for you. Gotta love the power of Google, <laughs> but here's a much better picture for you. So here is the uh, entire frost-free hose faucet. All right. So here's your valve, your shuttle valve. This is the hose connection. This is uh, an anti-siphon uh, type. So uh, any kind of back uh, pressure will be released here. That's a whole other video. Uh, but when you turn the handle, you're spinning this stem, which then is connected to this valve right here. So this washer here, when, you're, uh, when you open it, opens up and allows the water to pass through. When you close this, this shaft 
closes and closes the water off here. So if this is your basement right in this area here, uh, as long as the hose is disconnected, the water is off here and there is no water in here. Right? I say that if the long as the hose is disconnected. So if the hose is still connected, this is still filled with water. So as it gets cold outside and this water you know, freezes up, it's going to expand the whatever pressure remains in here and cause it to split, just like that video, that picture right there. All right, so if you have a frost-free hose faucet, make sure you must take off the, uh, the hose before uh, the weather drops below freezing. All right. Um, real quick, I know this has been a long video, 15 minutes, but, uh, you know, some clients ask, well, what are the pipes made out of? You know, most pipes are made out of copper. Some are made out of PEX. And depending on where you live, down in the south of the United States, you have a, a PVC. It's called CPVC. It's a plastic pipe. Um, that's what your, your pipes are made out of. But uh, most of uh, the clients that we service, it's copper. Um, and uh, you're starting to see a lot more PEX. And in some older homes, you can even have brass piping um, or galvanized piping. So it depends on the age of the house. So keep in mind that you want to, uh, you know, drip a few faucets, you know, throughout the house, especially like if there's a... Uh, you know, like a tub or shower valve that's located in an exterior wall, like in a bathroom. Let that slowly drip. Kitchen sinks, bathroom sinks, anything that's in an exterior wall, you want to try to get the water flowing because it's less likely to freeze up. And uh, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, remember, if you're in our service area, we would love to help you. Uh, we are commercial and residential service and repair experts. Our trucks, our fleet of trucks, come with thousands, I'm not joking, thousands of replacement parts to get the job done in one trip, in most cases. I can't guarantee we got everything, but we got enough to get almost every situation up and running while we're there, saving you time and money. All of our technicians, you know, go through rigorous amounts of annual training. Uh, you know, we send them to the factories, you know, like uh, Navy and Burnham, Whale McLean, Taco, Upanor, Viega. Um, uh, we strongly believe in continuing education is the best way to keep us the top of the game. Thank you so much for watching. Um, leave your thoughts, comments, criticism, even those in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, you know, subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that notification bell. And uh, we would love, and we would love for you to uh, be a member of uh, the Pipe Doctor Plumbing and Heating uh, community on our YouTube page. Right there, 239 subscribers, really appreciate it. You know, I try to post some videos, you know, on a weekly basis. You know, this is a, the one I just put in this morning. Uh, Ream Tankless Water Heater, error code uh, 12. You know, Lennox package, rooftop units, Navian errors, and some things like that. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Stay safe, stay warm, and thanks for watching.